I'd had a short and really quite catastrophic marriage and I'm left with this baby and I've got to get this baby back to Britain and I've got to rebuild us a life. And adrenaline kept me going through that and it was only when I came to rest that it hit me <laughs> what a complete mess I had made of my life. And that hit me quite hard. We were as skint as you can be without being homeless. In other words, we were existing entirely on benefits. And at that point, I was definitely clinically depressed. And that's just characterised for me by a numbness, a coldness and an inability to believe that you will feel happy again or that you could feel light-hearted again. It's just all the colour drained out of life, really. I think I had tendencies mm -hmm. towards depression from quite young. Mm -hmm. It became really acute um, when I was sort of uh, 25 to 28. Uh, were, 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 was a very was a dark time. Mm -hmm. It's that absence of feeling, and it's it's even the absence of hope that you can feel better. Mm -hmm. And it's so difficult to describe to someone who's never been there. Mm -hmm. But it because it's not sadness. Sadness is I know sadness. Sadness is not a bad thing. You know to cry and to feel. But it's that it's that cold absence of feeling, that really hollowed out feeling. That's what the dementors are. Standing in the doorway was a cloaked figure that towered to the ceiling. Its face was completely hidden beneath its hood, and then the thing beneath the hood, whatever it was, drew a long, slow, rattling breath, as though it were trying to suck something more than air from its surroundings. An intense cold swept over them all. Harry felt his own breath catch in his chest. The cold went deeper than his skin. It was inside his chest. It was inside his very heart. And I loved Jessica very, very much, and, and was terrified something was going to happen to her because I think I'd gone into that very depressive mindset where everything's gone wrong so this one good thing in my life will now go wrong as well. So it was almost a surprise to me every morning that she was still alive. I kept expecting her to die or it was a bad, bad time. If you stood in front of a bugger, what would, it, what would you see? Um, I'd see what Mrs Weasley sees in Order of the Phoenix, she sees her, um, this is a, a bit awful, but um, she sees her children dead. Oh my God. <laughs> I know, it's a bit disturbing. You are dark, so, aren't you? Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, I think for any mother, probably that's the worst thing you could possibly imagine. And that's what she sees as the war is starting and she knows her sons are going to be involved. Right. That's and what, what she worries you, about. And how do you, I've forgotten, how do you counter a bullet? What's the counter spell? You have to learn to laugh at it. Quite that's hard right. to laugh at that one though. And in fact, she can't someone else saves her from it she can't she can't um, she can't banish that image mum dying was like this death charge in my life the pain of her of her going and just missing such a huge part of her life she's 45 when she died which is far too young to die far too young to leave your family never knew what we all ended up doing and so on for mum there would have been a particular glory in being a writer because she was the real book lover and so it does add a little bit of poison to the knife, if you like, that the one thing that I think she really would have prized, she never knew. Perhaps two or three days after I had the idea for Harry, um, I disposed of his parents in, a, in quite a brutal way. Not a cr not cr it didn't read in a cruel way, but I mean, it was very cut and dry, nothing lingering, no debate about how it had happened. or And at that stage, no real discussion of how painful that was going to be. Well, of course, mum, mum died six months after I'd written my first attempt at an opening chapter um, and that made an enormous difference uh, because I was living it I was living what I just what I just written the mirror of error said he's absolutely entirely drawn from my own experience of losing a parent five more minutes just please God give me five more minutes it would never be enough mom Five minutes of telling her all about Jessie and you know because she, she has a grandchild who obviously she never saw and then I'd be trying to tell her about the books and then I'd realize that I hadn't asked her what's it like to be dead <laughs> fairly significant question but I can well imagine that happening but it would never be long enough that was the point of chapter 10 you know it's tougher on the living 
and you've just got to get past it.